Hello everyone, welcome to a puppyless Friday new product post. Uh, we have a few really interesting new products, so let's get started and see what's on the list for this week. First up, we've got a very interesting new kit for you. This is the Digital Sandbox Kit. The Digital Sandbox Kit is designed to bridge the gap between maybe the ultra noob that has never done anything with Arduino, never done anything with microcontrollers or programming, and maybe something like the SIK. The SIK is one of our flagship products and it teaches you about Arduino, how to connect different sensors, how to connect different inputs and outputs, and basically, you know, give you an introduction into digital microcontrollers and all that good stuff. The daunting thing about the SIK for some people is that it incorporates not only hooking up circuits, but also programming. The digital sandbox is a little bit different because everything is already hooked up for you, so it focuses solely on the programming. Now, this board can be programmed either in ArduBlocks, which is just a simple drag and drop programming language, or you could bring it into the full Arduino IDE if you wanted and actually do the you know, hand typey code stuff if you wanted. But the idea behind this is you could just use something as simple as ArduBlocks and you could do all your drag and drop programming and it gives you a really good introduction into how to use embedded microcontrollers with sensors without having to breadboard everything and then learn the code at the same time. The kit comes with the main digital sandbox board, and you see there's a lot of different things on here. Um, ultimately, over here at the heart, we have an Atmega 328 and an FTDI. So this whole section here is, you know, basically your run-of-the-mill Arduino. We also have a battery charger circuit over here, so you can connect a LiPo battery in there. And let's talk about some of the other things that are on here. We've got a digital switch, which is just a on or off. Uh, we've got a little LED bar graph, so you can, um, you know, make that do the thing. Uh, we've got a temperature sensor, we've got a light sensor, we've got a microphone, uh, we have another button, we also have an RGB LED, and we have this slide pot. And then over here we have a three pin header to connect to other various sensors. So if you want to go a little bit beyond this, you can actually connect some stuff to that. In addition to the board itself, it also comes with this nifty little base plate that sets on like that. This is just the protective cover on it, but it's a nice little clear base plate. And then we also have the screws and the standoffs to set that up. Looks nice. We include a USB cable, so you don't need any extra cables to get started with this. And then it also comes with this large, beautiful guide. And this runs you through all the experiments. This is what the RGBlox code looks like. So it's not very daunting. It's just dragging these little modules down, typing in your variables, and it's really easy to program for someone that has never seen programming language before. And this does run you through all the different circuits on the board, so you get the full use of all the hardware that's on there. If you go beyond this book and you want to go a little bit further and you want to maybe learn how to interface with some external hardware, we also do have the add-on kit. The add-on kit consists of a couple different pieces that connect to this board that give you a couple extra circuits to play with. Uh, you got your basic hobby motor, so you can actually use the hobby motor into that header. Uh, we've got these, um, you know, double length headers, so they can plug into there, and then you can plug something else into it. And then we also have a small servo motor, which is, of course, very handy for learning how to use a servo. And lastly, we have the Redbot buzzer, so this can plug directly into there with the use of the double headers, and you can get a buzzer for some audio feedback. For the add-on kit, all of those are described in the back of the book as add-ons. So you can do things like make a theremin and all sorts of other little things with the add-on kit, and all of that is included in the book that you get with the digital sandbox. Next up, we've got this little guy. This is a 40 amp solid state relay. You see these in a lot of um, different automation and control applications. It's a really simple and easy to use and easy to wire up device. Over here you can see we've got a couple of lug terminals and you see that this is the input side. You've got three to 32 volts DC input. So for any microcontroller or any other thing that you wanna apply voltage into this, you can put anywhere from three to 32 volts inside of there and it will latch the relay on this side. This is a solid state relay so there's no mechanical latching so these can actually turn on and off pretty quickly which is kinda neat. 
and because there's no mechanical latching, they also don't use a lot of current. So I think it's something like two or three milliamps is all it needs. So a traditional Arduino pin is plenty to latch this relay. Um, whereas with a traditional relay, like if you're doing one of those bigger relays, you might need to run it into a transistor, something like that, because the Arduino can't source enough current through its pins. So this makes these a little bit easier to use. Now these are only for switching AC current. So these are good for, you know, an outlet or a motor or a fan or something like that. And of course, 40 amps is plenty to do just about whatever you want with has this nice little plastic cover that comes off and you can either, either use ring terminals or fork terminals into here and you can switch 24 to 380 volts AC. So pretty much any AC voltage that you throw into there, it can switch. In order to demonstrate our new 40 amp solid state relays, I decided that we should use them to switch some sort of large uh, load like an AC motor, a power tool, blender, something like that. And um, I came across these really inexpensive angle grinders. And I thought, there's gotta be some use for them that doesn't involve uh, grinding on metal or you know, sanding or buffing something. There's gotta be something more unique than that. And uh, I started looking at plans for sirens. I know that the choppers, the air choppers in a siren have to move pretty quickly. So an angle grinder should be able to produce those speeds that you need to do that. And I settled on a design of a siren called a disc siren. It's called a disc siren because it uses discs to chop the air and create noise. Now, because you're using a disc, uh, you have to have forced air to actually create that noise. And to get that air, I've rigged up this copper air manifold out of some plumbing parts and a standard industrial pneumatic tool nipple. You just connect the hose there, and I've got air coming in from the shop compressor. And I've hooked up each of these three angle grinders through one of our new 40 amp solid state relays to uh, these teeny tiny buttons on the panel on the back of the device. Now, these buttons don't ever touch the current that's coming out of the wall. In fact, they're connected to a completely separate circuit coming from a five volt power supply. The five volt power supply is used to switch the relays and then the relays switch the large load for each of these angle grinders. So let's fire up the air and uh, make some noise. There you go.